we're going to continue to multiply polynomials today, but we're going to multiply um, some special polynomials. One example of a special product is this one, which is a polynomial squared. So I'm just going to get it out of the way right at the beginning. I'm going to show you the mistake that everybody's going to make at least one time. This would be wrong. This is wrong to say, well, that's got to be square the first thing plus square the second thing. That is incorrect. You're going to do it at least one time. You're going to say this 2 on the outside squared means distribute the squared. So don't be the kind of person who makes that mistake. Instead, when something is squared, what does that mean to do? It means multiply it by itself. So 3x plus 5 squared means 3x plus 5 times 3x plus 5. We did these kind of problems all day yesterday. This is a binomial times a binomial. It's the one and only time that the FOIL method would be appropriate if you are a fan of FOIL. Hopefully I talked you out of it yesterday, but after all my ranting and raving, if you still like FOIL, this is the one kind of problem it will work on. So somebody refresh my memory because it has been 24 hours since we've done this. How do I solve it? Yes, ma'am. Very good. 3x multiplied. Oh, so close. 9x squared. Oh, oh, you missed a step. Then we do 3x times 5. We distribute the 3x. That gives me a total of 15. Good. Okay, and then? Very good. Distribute the 5. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now what I want you to notice in this particular special product is what's going on in the middle here. You will notice that those are the same. It's 15x both times. That happens every single time you have a polynomial squared. The stuff in the middle is going to be the same. Always going to be adding the same thing. That's going to come up here in just a minute. Let's go ahead and finish it. 9x squared. 30x, very good. Great. And there's our answer. That's pretty good. So, I want to show you a little shortcut. A way that you can go straight to this answer when you have a polynomial that is squared. Here's the shortcut. You can go straight to the answer without doing the distributive property or without combining like terms. So, whatever the first number is, is replaced here and here. And whatever the second number is, B, is replaced here and here. So let's do that same problem again, only using this shortcut. I had 3x plus 5 squared. So in this problem, the 3x is my a, and the 5 is my b. Okay. So I start off with a squared. which is going to be 3x squared plus, and then I have 2 times a times b, so 2 times a times b plus b squared. So that's 9x squared, 
2 times 3 times 5 is 30, so 30x plus 25. And what do you know? It's the same answer. So, okay, so Christian says, I don't like that. And there's probably a few others of you thinking the same thing. I don't like that. This method obviously is optional because when we did it the old way, just write it out twice and distribute, we got the same answer. So if you hate this method of like finding the A's and the B's, you don't have to use it. You can do it the old way, just write it out twice and distribute and you'll get the same answer every time. Yes, ma'am. So what if it's 3x plus 5 to the 7th power? 7th? Yes. Then that is a nightmare. It is. You would have to write 3x plus 5 times 3x plus 5 times 3x plus 5 seven times, which means you would end up doing the distributor property seven times. I don't need you doing this. Doing what? What you're doing right now. Yeah. I'm doing math. Yeah, I don't need you talking right now. Save your drama for later, please. Okay. Let's try another one. No. Now, if you want to do it the old way, you could do 8c plus 3d times 8c plus 3d. Totally fine. And do the distributive property. I'm going to do the. Uh, I'm going to do the shortcut here, the little formula. So this is going to be my a, and this is going to be my b. So the first thing I'll have is a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. I'm waiting. Okay. There's my B. There's my A. And now I'm just going to go ahead and do the multiplication. 8C squared is? Mm -hmm. Plus? 24 times 2. So 48. C D plus 3D squared? 90. 90 squared, good. There's nothing wrong with doing this the old way with the distributor property. No one will throw garbage at you if you choose to solve it that way. Sometimes it's a little faster. Sometimes it takes exactly the same amount of time. Okay. What about if there's a minus sign? We also have a little shortcut formula for that one as well. It is exactly the same, except instead of plus 2ab, it's minus 2ab. Oops. Still plus b squared on the end. Again, I could do 2x minus 5y times 2x minus 5y and do distributive property. It's totally fine. Wait, what if the whole thing, like, 
plus uh, two AB plus B plus four AB. Just the thing in the middle is minus. The thing on the end's plus. Uh, here's why. If I do, oops, if I do a minus b times a minus b, and I distribute a times a is a squared. A times minus b is minus a b. Then I do negative b times a, which is minus a b, and then I do negative b times negative b, and a negative times a negative is a positive. And negative AB minus AB is minus 2AB. So that's why it works. Okay, back to our problem. There's my A, the 2X. Here's my B, 5Y. Here we go. A squared minus 2 times A times B plus b squared. Exactly right. I multiply everything together. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let everybody catch up. I know you're excited. I'm excited too. Math is awesome. Sometimes. But calm down. Sometimes. Okay, Matt. The first thing that I have is 2x squared, which gives me... 4x squared. Very good. Minus 2 times 2 times 5 is... 20. 20. And then I have an x and a y, so 20xy. Plus 25y squared. And there's my answer. So what did you do to get that? What did I do to get what? Yeah. I used. Hey, hey, hey. What I highlighted in red here is the formula that we're using. The first term in the formula is A. The second term in the formula is B. So over here in the problem, this was A and this was B. And I just replaced the A's and the B's with what I found in my problem. From side to side? Uh, no, um, probably Monday is when we're going to do that. I want to come in and watch the right. Probably Monday is when we're going to, since they're testing tomorrow, probably Monday is when we'll get to that. Kind of weird. What do you do? All right, so in this problem, A is the 6P, and B is just the one, not the negative one, just the one. And now I'm going to follow that formula up there that I highlighted in red. I start off with a squared. My a was 6p. My b was 1. So a squared is 6p squared. Okay. Next in the formula is the minus 2ab. So minus 2 times a. times b, which was 1, which I like because multiplying by 1 is pretty easy. The last thing in my formula is plus b squared, so plus b squared.
So somebody besides Maddie, because she's answering all of them today. Go ahead. Good. How about just 12 P? Because there's no other, there's only one P in the problem, just that P right there. Are you telling me one times one is two? Do you want to see me cry? <laughs> one. There we go. Nailed it. Good job. What do you mean, why? Your lawyer just gave me the answer. Why? I was asking. But you're adding the one in the one squared. Uh huh. So plus one. One squared means one times one, which is one. So I'm adding one. So far, so good? Okay, there is one other kind of special product I want to talk to you about. That is not squared. But it's close. So these are exactly the same polynomial, except one has a plus sign and one has a minus sign. When that happens, you have the exact same polynomial, only one plus and one minus. We call these conjugates. Not to be confused with your conjugates in Spanish. Or English, I guess. In math, it means they are exactly the same polynomial, except the sign in the middle is different. Okay. We will not discuss Spanish and English conjugates because they probably stole it from math anyway. Is that purple? Or yes. Okay. Your highlighting doesn't have to match mine exactly. Well, can I help you? All right, all right. So let's go ahead and do the distributive property the long way first, and then I'll show you the shortcut here. So 2x squared times 2x squared is? 4x squared. 4x to the fourth. Very good, Christian. And then 2x squared times minus 3 is? Good. So I've got the first thing distributed, which was the 2x squared. Now we'll do the second thing. 3 times 2x squared. Mm-hmm. Very good. Now, hey, what do you notice about the two things in the middle? That they're the opposite. They're going to cancel each other out. They're opposites. One's positive and one's negative. This happens every single time you multiply two conjugates together. Every time you multiply two conjugates, the two things in the middle drop out. Which means my answer is going to be 4x to the fourth minus 9. So... If my answer is 4x to the 4th minus 9, that means the only two things I really needed to multiply together were the first things and the last things. Right? Because the middle canceled out. So my shortcut here is, if I'm multiplying two conjugates together, I don't have to go through the entire distributive property. I just multiply the first two, and then I multiply the last two. There's no reason for me to do the entire distributive property if I see, oh, hey, those are conjugates. That means the middle is going to cancel out. So instead of doing foil, I do full. I do Florida. <laughs> I do Florida, except fewer gators. Florida man. Yes, you go Florida man on this problem. <laughs> Which is that first, first you do the math problem, and then you have assault somebody at Wendy's because they didn't give you enough nugget sauce or whatever, <laughs> whatever those whatever those crazy folks in Florida are up to these days. Who knows? <laughs> you do your math and then you wrestle a gator. So, 
Let's use our shortcut here for these. These are conjugates. They're conjugates because they are exactly the same, except one's plus and one's minus. So A in this problem is the three in, and B in this problem is the two. No. <laughs> so to solve this, I take A and square it. minus b and square it. Very good, Christian's got it. 9n squared. Very good. You nailed it, sir. I can tell your math teacher is ridiculously handsome. No one with an ugly math teacher could give answers that good. I assume those of you who are laughing are volunteering for Algebra 1 Summer School. Thank you for your sacrifice. I guess. So instead you're volunteering to be an Algebra 1 student two years in a row? I can't think of any other reason for insulting the teacher's clearly factual statement unless you're like, not only is my math teacher ridiculously handsome, he's so ridiculously handsome, I want to have him two years in a row. <laughs> clearly, that's the only possible explanation. Okay, here's one of each of the kind that we just did. Let's go ahead and practice these three. I'll make sure that you've done them correctly, and then I will inundate you with...